Alocasias are stunning tropical plants with arrowhead shaped leaves. They have some of the most striking foliage in the houseplant world. Day by day, alocasia becoming popular addition to indoor plant collection due to their stunning visuals. So today I will be sharing how to take care of alocasias. You will see several varieties in alocasia that are different in sizes, colors and shapes. The leaves themselves could be black, bronze or tar purple streaks. Another thing I love about this plant is the prominent veins on the leaves in green, black green and olive green shades depending on the variety. And some varieties have leaves that can grow up to almost 3 feet long. The characteristic and requirement of many them are similar. They are native to the tropical area in the South Pacific Island, particularly in Philippines. Alocasia plants grow from bulbs. So most of them go into the dormancy during the winter season when the temperature is low. But even if they lose all of their leaves, the stored energy in their bulbs allows them to sprout new leaves under the right conditions. So once the conditions are favorable for plants, they sprout again. Alocasias are adaptable and can handle range of light from medium to bright indirect light. This is due to the plant's natural habitat on the forest floor below the tree canopy. The amount of light the plant receives will dictate how quickly it grows. If you want your plant to push out new leaves directly and produce large leaves, then make sure the alocasia is in spot where it can receive plenty of bright indirect light. The plant will survive but not grow as quickly when placed in an area with lower lights level. You can keep alocasia outdoor but keep it in dappled shade. Direct sunlight will burn the leaves. So avoid placing alocasia in spot where it will expose to direct sunlight for prolonged period. I have placed my alocasias here in my balcony in shaded area. The right amount of water is the most important thing for growing alocasia. Trust me, I had lost burn my black velvet alocasia due to overwatering. You need to be very careful about watering. Alocasia love humid conditions but not the soil that stay overly moist. Wait until the top 2 or 3 inches of soil have dried before rewatering. There is a fine line with this plant. You want to keep the soil slightly moist but not soggy. And remember, they require less watering during winter season when they are in dormant period. Don't water too frequently and don't leave the soil overly moist for a long time. Allow the top few inches of soil to become nearly dry before watering. As I said, the main alocasia killer is overwatering. Soggy soil makes the plant susceptible to fungal infection, to root rot, so water carefully. Remember, large broad-leaved elephant ear alocasia, which is commonly used for outdoor landscaping purpose, need more water compared to the small houseplant varieties. Also consider aerating the soil once in 15 days before watering. Over time, Soil sitting in the same pot can become heavy and compacted with regular watering. This soil prevents the water, oxygen and nutrients from reaching roots, so it can eventually delay plant growth. I use stick to create air pockets that are essential to send water, nutrients and oxygen to the plant roots. All alocasia love free, well draining, nutrient treat chunky potting mix. Use soil medium that can retain some moisture but also 
allows good drainage of excess water to avoid root rot. So use proper growing medium because soil can be friend or enemy in your effort to properly water your alocasia. Make sure there is plenty of organic matter like compost or shredded leaves because their natural soil is made of fertile organic material. The good soil of alocasia must contain 50% of uh, aerating material. You can use coarse sand, perlite or cococoir and other half should be of organic material like compost. The medium consistency should be loose, chunky and airy. These plants grow best in humid environment because they are from tropical forest area. If you live in drier climate, then consider using humidifier or pebble tray to maintain humidity around them. Frequent misting is also a good option to maintain the humidity. Keep the plant away from dry air that is emitted by heaters and air conditioners. Rotate your plant periodically to ensure even growth in all sides and dust the leaves often so the plant can photosynthesize efficiently. Misting your plant can help keep the leaves clean and free from dust buildup. When dusting the leaves, also take the opportunity to inspect the underside and keep an eye out for pests. Plants need sunlight to prepare their food, but dusty layer on leaves can limit the amount of light that leaves receive. So it is necessary to clean the leaves to make plants healthier. Routine fertilizer, especially when plant is actively growing, can help these plants to push out new growth and large foliage. Seaweed solution or fish emulsion are excellent fertilizers for this plant. Do not feed them when they are in their dormant phase. Alocasia likes to be slight root bound, so there is no need for frequent reporting. They do well in slightly small pots. Whenever you notice, Roots are coming out from the drainage hole, that time you can report this plant. Select the pot 1 to 2 inches larger than its current pot. Alocasia have rhizome root system. They sprout from the central rhizome. So while repotting, separate them and divide them carefully. So you can plant them in different pots. This way you can easily multiply them or propagate them. I will make separate video on their propagation. Alocasias are extremely prone to spider mites, so regularly check the leaves, especially under side of the leaves. Whenever you observe any infection, firstly rinse the leaves and the stem with soapy water and follow this by wiping the plant with neem oil. Lastly, increase the humidity around your alocasia because spider mites thrive in dry conditions, so regular misting can help prevent the bugs from coming back. Remember, each plant is unique living thing and may have different needs. Especially it depends on its location, placement. So pay attention to the condition of your alocasia and its watering needs and you will have long and happy relationship with your alocasia. That's all for today's video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Till then, take care and happy gardening.